All right, everybody, we're about ready to start our third talk today. This talk will be by one of our wonderful CTSO officers, the wonderful Anish Sangratri. All right, so you've heard of a variety of topics today, and today I want to switch gears up. Instead of talking about theories, I wanted to propose a solution in which we can save innovation and ingenuity for the future. And my solution is extraterrestrial mining. In this talk, we'll be going over why it's needed and how we can do it ourselves with our current resources. Let's get started. So everything that we've built on and everything that works currently uses materials, more specifically metals. Metals are the livelihood and progression of society. All of our ages that we have progressed through in society are classified by metals. The Bronze Age, Silver Age, the Gold Age, even the Industrial Revolution built off of metals. But there's a big problem with this, one that we have yet to realize, and that is Earth is finite. Earth is limited. We only have a limited amount of these materials and metals. And once we run out, we're out. But there is a way to change this. If you look at this picture on the screen, you can see that everything, including your cell phone, is made out of metals. And now you might be thinking, that's such a small amount of metals and materials used in your cell phone that doesn't really make that much of an impact. But you have to realize that these are mass produced. And mass produced means there's machines that make these, and those machines are built off of metals and materials as well. Therefore, lowering our supply, increasing demand. One huge example of this can be seen with one particular example of gold. If you look at the price of an ounce of gold about 20 years ago, you realize that it was about $300 for an ounce of gold. Now that same ounce of gold is about $2,100 because demand keeps increasing and supply keeps dropping. But that can change. This right here pictured is 16 Psyche an asteroid that was recently run through a spectrogram by NASA. And after analysis of the spectrogram results, they have realized that there are about $42 trillion worth of metals in here. More specifically, gold, steel, iron, nickel, and a lot of rare earth metals. And that begs the question, why are we still mining on Earth? Why haven't we looked at other sources? And that is where we turn back the clock on Earth itself. Earth started out as one of these asteroids. We started out as a big floating rock in space. And through time and several collisions of other asteroids, we formed into a planet that contains materials. But like I mentioned earlier, Earth is limited and we have a finite amount of materials. The best way to think about this is Earth is like a small reservoir. We're only given a certain amount. And asteroids are the source. Now you may be thinking, okay, now that we've established that there is a source for all these materials, how do we get to it? We have to think about three things before we can start. A, how are we going to power such an operation? B, how are we going to run such an operation to avoid any safety or deaths or injuries? And C, how are we going to get these materials back to Earth for use? Let's start with A, power. You can always think, oh, well, solar is you there. Solar is renewable, solar is clean. But there's a big problem with solar. Up here, you see a picture of NASA's Opportunity rover. This rover was sent to Mars a couple years ago. And for the first few years, it was perfectly fine. But over years, particulate matter and dust have accumulated on top of the solar panels, slowly weakening the efficiency of this solar panel and almost killing the rover. Luckily on Mars, there was a dust storm that came in and cleared out the dust. But we're not that lucky when we come to an operation of this magnitude. Therefore, solar is a very good option, but the cost and time needed to keep and maintain a solar grid to power an operation of this size is just not worth it. So NASA started to look into other possible power solutions and they landed on everybody's favorite, nuclear. Nuclear power 
is very risky, but recently there was a huge breakthrough in nuclear fusion that can power cities for very cheap. But if we're basing our operation off of current resources, we can use our good old friend nuclear fission. And another breakthrough made by NuScale and reported by NPR was that they're able to now condense a nuclear fission reactor down to the size where it can fit in the back of a semi-truck trailer. Multiple of these can power an operation this big. But now you, be, now you may be thinking, okay, now that we've got energy sorted out, what about actually mining and refining the materials on the asteroid? And that's where we look into machines. One thing I want to put in place is that humans are squishy. We are very, very fragile. It's very hard to send a human into space and bring the human back safely. So that is where we look to machines. And more specifically, fully automated factories, AKA lights out factories. These are factories that run all throughout the day and all throughout the night, only ever stopping if there is a major maintenance failure. But with our current technology and our current progression in innovation and ingenuity, we can automate maintenance as well, down to the point where these rigs can be fully automated. So they would be mined, automated, and refined, completely automated through these refineries. Lastly, how are we going to get these materials that are mined and refined back down to Earth? That's where we take a little inspiration from one of my favorite space missions, the Apollo missions. The Apollo missions had a cool way to bring astronauts back down to Earth, and that is landing modules. Landing modules are made out of simple materials of ceramics and stone in which they're able to withstand high temperatures and bring material and bring the astronauts back down to space. What's to say we can't do the same thing with materials but on smaller scales and not have to worry about squishies at all. Therefore, we can set drop zones in the ocean and still be able to power ingenuity and innovation through these excess amount of materials that we have obtained through this operation. My favorite way to put all of this into perspective is if you give a kid five cookies to leave the cookie jar in plain view of the kid. Once that kid runs out of cookies, he's out. There's no more need to, he can't do anything unless he finds a way to get to that cookie jar. In our situation right now, the kid is us, society, eating up all of our materials on Earth as we're given a very limited amount. And the cookie jar is a source of all of our materials, asteroids. I want to establish that this venture is very risky, but so is every venture. It is very high risk, but also very high reward, and it's needed for the infrastructure of our future. Thank you very much.